Okay, today we're moving on just from straightforward equations to talk about ratio and proportion. So let's start with some vocab. Um, rates and ratios, you spent a lot of time in comparing and scaling last year working with these. Um, a ratio, that's just a comparison of two numbers by division. So a lot of times we say 5 to 3 could be the ratio of boys to girls. And you might remember that you can write a ratio like with the colon, 5 to 3 like I have above, or you can write it as a fraction, 5 to 3, or you can write it with the word 5 to, T-O, 3. Okay, a rate, it's a special type of ratio. It compares two quantities measured in different units. So, for example, you might get paid $30 for four hours. That's a rate, $30 for four hours. A lot of times when we're looking at rates, we like to look at the unit rate. So that's a rate with a denominator of 1. So for example, when you're driving, it might be 55 miles per hour. If we look at this problem above, $30 for 4 hours, we could divide 30 divided by 4 to get that our unit rate is $7.50 per hour. That would be a unit rate when you're going per 1. Okay, let's look at some examples. So the first one, this is a really typical type of problem that I do all the time when I'm going in the grocery store. I'm trying to find a better buy. Um, this one says brand A of orange juice costs $3.12 for 48 ounces. Brand B of juice costs $2.04 for 32 ounces. Your task is to find the unit rate for each brand what's, and then say what's a better buy. Okay, you might be able to do this in your on your own. We'll see. Um, so usually in a unit rate, you're finding per ounce or maybe per dollar. In this case, I think it would probably make a little more sense to do per ounce. So we're going to do $3.12 divided by 48. That could give us our unit rate for brand A. So I'll probably use a calculator for that. I'm going to get 0 0.065. Okay, and I'll think about what that means. 0 0.065, that's going to be 0 0.065 dollars per ounce because I divided dollars by ounces. This was dollars and this was ounces. Okay, so for my brand, that was brand A. Brand B, I'm going to do $2.04 divided by 32. So again, I probably use a calculator for that division. And I get 0 0.06375. So this is going to be 0 0.06375 dollars per ounce. Okay, these look very close. They're both a little bit more than six cents per ounce, but brand B is a little bit cheaper. You can see 0.06375 is a little bit less than 0.065, so brand B is a better buy. Okay, you can solve this other ways, but unit rate is just the way that we're going to be focusing on right now. Okay, problem two here. In 2000, Lance Armstrong completed this 3,630-kilometer Tour de France course in 92.5 hours. Traveling as the average speed, how long would it take Lance to ride 295 kilometers? Okay, you can try this problem on your own um, and see if you do it in a similar way that I do or a different. Okay, so there's a lot of ways to do this problem. It says he completed 3,630 kilometers in 92.5 hours. So I might find his average speed in kilometers per hour, since I mentioned that. So I'm going to divide 3,630 divided by 92.5. It looks like Lance Armstrong is going, this is not a pretty number, but he's going at about 39.24 kilometers per hour. Okay. If I want to find how long it's going to take him to do 295 kilometers, and he's going 39.24 kilometers every hour, I could do 295 divided by 39.24. And I'm going to just use that what I have stored in my calculator. And that looks like it's pretty close to about 7.5 or 7, maybe about 7.52 hours. So it's going to be close to this. And I rounded, so use that approximately symbol, that squiggly equal sign. And this seems like it um, could make sense because it's significantly lower. Okay. 
Let's look at a unit analysis type problem, and I'll show you two different ways to do this. Okay, when we talk about unit analysis, especially when you get into like physics, chemistry, all that stuff in high school, your teacher is going to want you to be a pro at unit analysis, converting between one and another. So what I want to remind you is that if you multiply a number by one, you always get the same number. Remember, that's the identity property of multiplication. So unit analysis involves multiplying by one a lot of times, but we're going to multiply by something that my husband likes to call a sfu, a sneaky form of one, something that's going to help us out. So sfu, sneaky form of one, we're going to look for a good sfu to help multiply to change 40 miles per hour into feet per second. So what's happening here is we're going 40 miles per one hour, and I want to change my answer into something that's feet per second. So I like to think of this as I'm going to multiply by things that equal one a lot of times until I get an answer that's in feet per second. Okay. So first of all, I'm trying to get miles to feet, so I need to know or look up that there's 5,280 feet in a mile. So if I say that 5,280 feet divided by one mile, I hope you know that that is a form of one because I'm just having one mile over a mile, but just in different forms. The reason that I might want to multiply by this, if you remember cross-canceling, it's good because it looks like my mile is on the top here and on the bottom here. Those would end up canceling out and I'm going to be left with feet on the top, which is what I want in my final answer. Okay, So I'm dealing with the feet there. Now I want to deal with the hours and minutes, seconds thing. So I know that there's 60 minutes in an hour. If I want my hours to cancel out, I'm going to put one hour on the top here and 60 minutes on the bottom. And the reason I'm picking that again is because that I've got hour on the top here, hour on the bottom here, and those two would cancel out. Okay, but I want seconds, and right now I have minutes, so I need to go a little bit further. So again, if I look here, I might be able to say, well, there's 60 seconds in a minute. I want seconds to be on the bottom, and plus I want minutes to cancel out, so there's one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Okay, and I like this. It's nice because the minutes here are canceling out. Okay, and now if you look across at all your units on the top, everything has canceled out except for feet, which is good because I want feet as my answer. If you look on the bottom, everything's canceled out except for seconds, which is good because I want seconds as my answer. So now I have kind of a simple fraction problem where on the top I'm doing 40 times 5,280. And on the bottom, I'm doing 60 times 60. So I can do 40 times 5,280 divided by 60 times 60. And I'm going to get an answer of about 58.7. Or if you want to be precise, it's 58.6 repeating. And this is my answer in feet per second. Okay, this is usually a pretty tough topic at first. So we'll see if I have time to come back to it or if we'll have to just do some of it in class. Um, you can also try to logic it out. Okay, so a sloth travels 0.15 miles per hour. Your job is to convert this speed to feet per minute. So I want you to try to do that unit analysis technique if you can um, and see if you get it right and then come back and see what I did. Okay, so I'm going to start out again with what I have and what, what I want. So I want 0.15 miles, you know I'm not talking about you Jordan, by the way, per one hour. And I'm trying to get my answer into feet per minute. Okay, so it looks here I'm going to try to multiply by a good sfu, a sneaky form of one that's going to get my answer into feet per minute. So I want feet on the top. So I'm going to remember again that there's 5,280 feet in a mile. And that's good because then I have these miles are canceling out. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply again. I'm wanting minutes on the bottom and I have hours over here. So I'm going to say there's 60 minutes in an hour. Again, I want minutes on the bottom in my answer, so I'm going to do one hour over 60 minutes. And that's good because my hours are canceling out. I'm going to look right away that I've got, 
The only unit left on the top is feet, and the only unit left on the bottom is minutes, which is good because I'm asking for my answer to be in feet per minute. So I can come right back here, and I look that on the top, I just have 0.15 times 5,280. So I have 0.15 times 5,280 on the top, and on the bottom, all I have left is 60. So I'd use a calculator to solve this. Um, 0.15 times 5,280 is 792 over 60, so divide by 60. I have an answer of 13.2, and remember that my unit was in feet per minute. Okay, so it's 13.2 feet per minute. All right. Last year you studied proportions a little bit too, and a proportion is a special equation that says that two ratios are equal. So one ratio equals another ratio, and usually you see it written as a fraction. It's good to know, even though we didn't focus on this a lot last year, we touched base on it a little bit, the cross products of a proportion, um, if A over B equals C over D, then it's always true every, every time that A times D, if you go across like this, that always equals the same thing as B times C. If those two fractions are equal, their cross products always equal each other. Okay, so that's important to know. And um, we're going to use that skill to solve a couple proportions. Um, I don't want you to forget about using scale factor and some of the other techniques that we talked about in the past, but I want you to work on this a little bit too. So this would say that 5 times W, and I'm going to write that as 5W, equals the same thing as 4.5 times negative 6. And our job is to solve this equation for w. So it's good because we practiced solving equations before. And 4.5 times negative 6, that's negative 27. So that equals 5w. I'm going to divide it by 5 to get my answer that w, it equals um, negative 5.4. And it's always smart to check. I'm going to let you try that one on your own to check it and make sure it works. Okay, this one's a little bit more complicated, but it's a similar type of problem. It's a proportion that says this fraction or this ratio equals this other ratio. And I'm gonna, we're going to practice cross-multiplying today. So I'm going to say that z plus 3 times 6, and I can't forget to write my z plus 3 in parentheses because they're grouped together, times 6. I'm going to put that in the front because you guys like that better. Equals 4 times the quantity z minus 4. Okay, this looks like a great problem. Um, I'm going to use the distributive property to help me solve it. So I'm going to multiply across out 6 times z is 6z. 6 times 3 is 18. Multiply over here too. We get 4z minus 16. Okay, now I'm going to think about doing the same thing to both sides. I've got variables on both sides. So I like to get rid of 4z first. Okay. And then that's going to be 2z plus 18 equals negative 16. Looks like I'm going to have to squeeze over here. So I said 2z plus 18 equals negative 16. I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides. Okay, and then I have just left it looks like 2z equals negative 34. Divide here by 2, and I get z equals negative 17. Negative, don't forget that. Okay, and I will want to check if this one's right. Okay, so I'll show this check this time. So I'm going to squeeze it over here on the left. So I'm plugging in negative 17 in for z. So I want to know if negative 17 plus 3 over 4 really equals the same thing as negative 17 minus 4 over 6. So I've got negative 17 plus 3, that's negative 14 fourths. I want to know if that really equals negative 17 minus 4, which is negative 21 sixths. Okay, and lo and behold, if you look at negative 14 fourths, that's negative 3.5. And negative 21 sixths, that's also negative 3.5. So it looks like you got the equation right, and z really does equal negative 17. So check your workout. Um, work on these cross-multiplying skills. We'll practice more in class. And that unit analysis is the tough stuff. So I will see you guys tomorrow.